in this lecture, we're going to study the electrolysis of aqueous solutions, but the difference now is uh, that we are going to use uh, active electrodes. Uh, previously, we would uh, we were studying electrolysis using inert. We were previously doing electrolysis using inert electrodes. Now, inert electrodes were made from they were either made from graphite or platinum. Now these were unreactive substances. They were unreactive and since they were unreactive so they did not have any tendency to lose electrons. So there was no tendency to lose electrons. Graphite is carbon. Carbon is in group 4. So it has no tendency to lose or gain electron. It never forms. It's 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 a very rare case where, where carbon actually ends up forming an ion. Platinum is the most unreactive in the reactivity series. It has no tendency to lose electrons. It never forms an ion. But now what's the case with active electrodes? Active electrodes Now, active electrodes are made from reactive metals, uh, which are higher up in the reactive TCs, which are reactive. And reactive metals have a tendency to lose electrons. So, for example, if I have nickel an electrode that is made from nickel and the battery is trying to pull electrons away from it then nickel would end up losing electrons to the battery and two electrons would end up going to the battery so this is the only difference between an inert and an active electrode and we're going to do the electrolysis and one uh, very familiar electrolysis that is the electrolysis of copper sulfate we're going to do the electrolysis of CuSO4 aqueous and we're going to use we're going to use copper electrodes so this is the first electrolysis that we're going to study and uh, the way this electrolysis would be done is we're going to draw a beaker. So we have a beaker or a container in which the electrolyte, which is uh, CuSO4, would be placed. We're going to dip two electrodes Right, and those two electrodes would be connected to the terminals of a battery. So this is your electrolysis. Electrons would be the battery would be providing electrons from this side. It would be trying trying to pull electrons from the other side. Uh, this electrode, this is the cathode. It's the negative cathode, and it's made out of copper. So it's made out of copper. Similarly, this one is the positive terminal. This is the anode and it's also made out of copper. So we have these two electrodes and they are dipped in a solution of CuSO4 aqueous. So if it is CuSO4 aqueous, there would be how many ions? There would be Cu2 plus and that would be attracted to the cathode and there would be SO4 minus 2 that would be attracted to anode and we're going to have uh, two ions because it's aqueous there would be two ions coming from H plus one uh, there would be two ions coming from water as well one is H plus one and the other one is OH minus one so the battery would be pulling electrons from these ions and taking them back and it would be giving electrons from the other side now the only difference using active electrodes 
only difference between a normal electrolysis of aqueous solution and the electrolysis of aqueous solution using active electrodes is at the anode. That's the only difference that's going to happen. The reaction is anode is going to be slightly more, uh, slightly different. And that difference is that remember whenever you're using an active electrode, the anode starts to it starts to dissolve. What that means is, now the battery has, what's going to happen at the anode? The battery is trying to pull electrons. Uh, how many substances are there from which the battery could actually pull electrons? You have SO4 minus two. The battery could pull electrons from SO4 minus two. You have OH minus one. The battery could pull electrons away from OH minus one. Plus, there's now an active electrode, which means the battery could pull electrons from copper electrode itself. So the copper anode is also now a candidate offering electrons. And since copper is the closest uh, element to the battery, the electrons are lost by this copper anode. And when copper loses electrons, it's going to lose two electrons because copper forms plus two ion. It's going to form a plus two ion. And that ion is going to go into the electrolyte and there would be more Cu plus 2. Slowly this anode would start to dissolve and more copper plus 2 ions in the solution are going to be formed. So anode, that's the only difference that happens when you're using active electrodes. The electrode dissolves at the anode. You have, instead of SO4 minus 2 or OH minus 1 losing electrons, you have the anode itself losing electrons to the battery and that anode would start dissolving and form ions and those ions are going to end up in the solution. Uh, now let's uh, figure out what's going to happen at cathode. Now at cathode you have uh, you have the battery is providing electrons to cathode. It's going to gain electrons. It's going to get reduced. You have three candidates again. One is Cu2 plus. The other one is H plus one. And the third one is the copper cathode because the cathode is now active. So the third one is copper cathode. But now Copper metals, metals, remember this, metals never lose, uh, never gain electrons. You, you will never see a metal forming a negative ion. So this copper cathode would never, ever gain electrons. So that's out of contention. You're left with Cu plus 2 and H plus 1. And if you look at the reactive CCs, the least reactive one is Cu plus 2. So that is the one that would end up gaining electrons. So Cu plus 2 would gain two electrons coming from the battery and it's going to form Cu. So in a way what's happening is that copper ions are dissolving at anode and these copper ions are getting converted into uh, copper metal and you would start seeing a coating of copper metal forming on top of this on top of this electrode. So let's revise Remember this cathode, it's the same old equation. No, there's no difference that occurs at cathode. The, you had two ions, Cu plus two and H plus one. You just had to figure out which one was the least reactive of them. But at anode, that's the difference. Anode, remember anode starts to resolve. It's the anode that's going to lose electrons in this case. Now we'll do another example of electrolysis of uh, of uh, an electrolyte using active electrodes and this time we're doing going to do the electrolysis of silver nitrate and we're using silver which is a EG electrodes and let's draw a diagram first uh, here's our beaker these are our electrodes which are going to be connected to the terminals of a battery. This side is the negative cathode, this side is the positive anode and both of them are going to be made from silver metal and you're going to have 
an electrolyte and that electrolyte would be made out of silver nitrate aqueous which means you have Ag plus 1 ions which are going to get attracted to the negative cathode. You have NO3 minus 1 ions which would be attracted to the positive anode and you will have two ions coming from water. One is H plus 1 and the other one is OH minus 1. So that's uh, your diagram for electrolysis. Now let's uh, figure out what's going to happen at anode again. And I told you the only difference between electrolysis of a normal electrolyte using inert electrodes and an electrolyte using silver or active electrodes is the difference is going to be at the anode. So what's the difference? At the anode, the battery would be pulling electrons away from this anode. Now as it is doing that, it has three options. It can either take electrons from NO3-1, it can take electrons from uh, your three options, NO3-1, you also have OH-1 and this AG electrode as well which is uh, a candidate as well because it's going to give it's capable of giving electrons as well because it's slightly it's a slightly reactive metal compared to those inert electrodes so since silver is the closest to the battery it's silver that ends up losing electron loses one electron because silver forms Ag plus one ions so as it loses one electron silver changes from metal to a silver ion which ends up in the solution. So I told you that the anode starts to it starts to dissolve. Now let's see what's going to happen at uh, cathode and I told you it's the same Uh, there's no change at cathode. It's the same technique, the same process that happens uh, when you're doing electrolysis using uh, normal uh, inert electrodes. So at cathode, the, if you look at the diagram, the battery is trying to give electrons. And there are three candidates which can actually gain electrons. One is Ag plus one. The other one is H plus one that can also gain electrons. And the third one is the silver electrode or cathode in this case. Now I told you that metals never gain electrons to form negative ions so this one is out of contention. It's not going to gain electrons and you're left with Ag plus 1 and H plus 1 and the least reactive is the one that gains electrons. So if you look at the reactivity series Ag plus 1 is the least reactive so Ag plus 1 ends up gaining an electron and forming silver again. So, what's going to happen is that Ag, AG is going to get converted into Ag plus 1 and it's going to end up in the solution. This Ag plus 1 is going to get attracted to cathode and it's going to get converted back into Ag. So, you're going to start seeing a silvery layer of Ag metal depositing on this uh, cathode. Now, this has many interesting applications and one of those applications is... Uh, the two apply one of those apl applications is called electro plating and we're going to discuss electro plating in the next lecture